Hi there everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how I clean my Toyota Alphard. So it's quite a big vehicle and like all big vehicles, maintenance can be a bit of a problem uh, if you're trying to keep it in peak condition. Uh, what I look at is I'm trying to do it in a way which is uh, effective time-wise and also doesn't tire me out. It's winter just now so it's exceptionally cold outside so we don't want to be hanging around here too much. In summer, yes, you know, I'd probably be all up for having a great clean etc but this is winter so i want to try and get it through uh, without having any damage to the paintwork and give it a little bit of protection from the salt and any other debris that might be on the road so i'm going to work through this car and just do it in a way which i think is easy and you know acceptable for for everyone the first thing to bear in mind this is quite a tall car so i'm six foot two um, so I use a two-step ladder, but if you're not six foot two, you're smaller, then you might have to get a little bit longer on the ladder. I'm using a catch today, uh, which is uh, unusual. I normally use a hose, but I, I put the car right at the far end. My hose didn't extend that far, so I'm going to use the catcher. And you can use a hose. It's just to really just dampen down the the um, the, the dirt and to loosen up any uh, debris. If you do find any bird debris, then I'm going to recommend that you look at my other video on how to remove... Uh, bird uh, poo from the car and that is a, a slightly different way of doing things so don't don't try and scrape it off other thing is i'm just using a uh, basic uh, shampoo here this one is uh, just a turtle wax i believe and uh, let me have a look is it turtle wax yes it's turtle wax uh, so it's got uh, the ability to actually strengthen it to give it more um, uh, cleaning power or reduce it for less cleaning power that uh, helps keep the waxes on the car. Now I'm just using a regular bucket. You can get buckets which uh, have grit, grit uh, uh, guards on them. It's just a regular button, so bucket. Uh, I like this particular soap because it's got lots of foam and smells nice, etc. If you try some like Tesco's uh, you know, wax, I'm quite sure it works well as a wax, but it's really horrible to use. It's like slime on your hand is, is a nasty feeling. Um, you do get uh, waxless ones as well, which are supposed to give you a better uh, control of your, your shine and also to stop smears in the glass but for all uh, effective reasons this one I'm using is max power and it's nothing fancy uh, but it does produce a good lather and smells well a lot of the products uh, I use I look to see if they go on well if they're easy to use and if they're just kind and just smell lovely kind to the skin and smell lovely the reason for that again is because if you're washing cars you want it to be fun you don't want it to be a, a punishment so that's going to start first and with this, I'll use a, uh, a mitt, uh, which is one of these microfiber mitts, just to get, the, to get the, the lather onto the car. And I'll do the car, I'll wash the car twice uh, with, this, uh, with this soap, starting from the top and working downwards. Always working from the cleaner areas uh, downwards. So that means you might have to circle the car, do the, do the, the roof, uh, and then do the sides. And as I do them, as I do each panel, I said to the roof, then I'll just use the catcher again and give it a good uh, clean with that and let the, the, the dirt drip down. Then I'll move on to the window side, uh, again catcher it, and then I'll finally move down to the middle panels uh, catcher and then the lower panels and catcher. So once that's uh, all done, then it's uh, nice and clean. So there, there you go. That's uh, the car uh, washed down and a rinse down as well. And what I'm going to do here is using this towel. Now, it's a, a towel specifically designed for cars. So it's got high absorbency and it's very, very soft. Uh, this gets washed separately. Uh, it's an alternative to the old chamois leather, leather, which of course comes from animal. This one uh, is just uh, manufactured and we just wipe it through. So again, it just wipes and it wrings out nice and dry. When it comes to washing these, don't wash them with uh, uh, regular soap and conditioner. Uh, to make it soft because the conditioner is a is the last thing you want on this because it creates like a plasticky coating on the fibers reduces the absorbency uh, so when you're washing these look at my towel video and you'll see that i recommend to use uh, just hair conditioner in the washing machine along with a little bit of mixing with bicarbonate and soda and that will create the fluffiness and the dryness you need without losing the the uh, absorbency so we're going to go around this entire car and clean it all up and then we'll take a little 10 minute break and just allow the residual um, residual uh, water to bead. Now, one thing to mention is that a, I am not going to clean up the, the roof. Uh, this time I did the roof in summer when it was nice and, and warm and I took the roof rack off 
and I give it a good coating with a, a PTFE sealant uh, and on top of that put a layer of wax as well. So I'm hoping that will be enough just to get me over the, the winter period and then I can do it in the summer. So you can see I'm not actually washing the entire car. I'm washing some parts more selectively than others. Um, now, here we go. So this car is nice and dry. You'll notice I've also popped up the windscreen wipers to make sure that all the grit in there just goes down, doesn't accumulate in that one area. So the next thing we're going to do is to use uh, some sort of sealants uh, just to protect it. But before I do this, I'm going to walk around the car and I check out all the damages on the car, which uh, the months have been uh, doing. Now you'll see there we've got a scratch right across there. Now it's, it's actually a long key right across the entire car, but it's made the, the most... Uh, obvious impression there and round the back so this is quite uh, upsetting usually for most people um, but a it's one of those things that having a car except you can get people doing this stuff to your car so this goes right down on, on uh, all sides of the car um, uh, except for the back and for the bonnet for some reason I'm not too sure why uh, but it's on both sides uh, of the car uh, it's really deep at this area so I can actually feel it um, with my with my nails and we're going back to a various bits and pieces I use. So I'm just going to use stuff that is really available. So this is a, a Lidl's uh, um, polishing pad. And you'll notice, you'll see them, uh, the green ones. They're really, really soft. They have got a little bit of uh, a seam. And again, these are from Lidl's as well, the blue ones. The green ones I use for applying polishing, uh, applying polishes. And the blue ones I use for removal. Now this one I'm going to use T-cut scratch remover. Nothing fancy. Uh, I have got fancier stuff in, in the in the garage but I'm just going to use T-cut because I just want to show you it can be done with uh, regular stuff. We don't want to sweat it. This is just localized. So here we go. We are just applying it in a circular motion. Not applying too much pressure. I'm applying it in a circular motion because that's what they recommend. Um, this is one that you apply by hand. Again, I've got a machine to to do uh, a, a, a machine and a different polish to do the entire car to remove all swells. But this one is just my emergency winter clean, just to make me feel a bit better and for it not to look as if somebody's keyed it. So somebody else comes along and thinks, well, you know what? It's acceptable to key this again. And in this particular case, I'm just using the 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 green one to wipe it down as well. And as you can see, the scratch has gone there, but we've still got the big scratches here. So these ones are the the much deeper ones um so if you feel the nail i'm just saying the nail catches on top one but not the bottom one when the nail catches it's a good indication that it's going to be difficult to to actually remove with a just with a, a polish and you may need to use some sandpaper again that's a different a different kettle of fish altogether so what i'm hoping for is i get this to a point where the scratch disappears. So the scratches appears because it's an optical illusion. When the top, the clear coat to the top coat gets scratched, the light hits it at a, at a different angle, so it makes it obvious that it's scratched. So what we're trying to do is blend that, uh, blend that, uh, that clear coat in, and just remove the edges which causes the light dispersal, which makes it look obvious. Of course, the the edge where my finger catches it is because it is. A deep cut in there. So again, I'm just using the same cloth as I said. I use the blue ones to wipe away, but in this particular case, I'm using the same cloth because you know um, we don't want to just waste cloths because once I use the tea cut, I'm not going to be using it again. So I'm going to do this several times until I get it to a point. But we're not hanging around. We're just going in there. We're wiping down and uh, utilizing it across. Now, some of these uh, some of these abrasive pastes um, they have a diminishing grit. Uh, uh, functionality. So basically the grit starts off as hard and then you work it down, work it down, the grit breaks down, it removes the, the more aggressive uh, scratches and then it breaks down, it becomes almost a polish. Uh, and they're the ones that I use on my, uh, when I'm using the big uh, circular pad. Uh, so I use a diminishing grit. And as I said, just become a master of the one tool that you're using. I will come back to that and I'll show you that at the end, what I've done. Okay, it's a quick video, so I don't want to hang around too much. So here we go. We're talking about waxes now, and there's different types of waxes. We can break them into two main camps, which is the natural waxes and the synthetic uh, waxes or synthetic uh, sealers, should I call them. Okay, but people might call them waxes. So the one I'm using here is authentic. It's a Japanese uh, show wax, I think it's by Fuso. And um, it's a it's a fantastic, I think it's a Fuso 99. I can't remember the exact number. But it's fantastic wax. I use it usually 
during in summer and that's because in summer i want to be out there waxing the car and trying to get the maximum depth of the shine uh, from it it gives it a good degree of protection however like natural waxes the natural waxes cannot compare to synthetic waxes synthetic uh, sealants because they're going to go in there and they're just going to seal and they're going to last a little bit longer so that's what i'm going to be using in the winter periods so uh, i like to use the the uh, natural waxes canuba waxes uh, in summer and sealants in winter so the other one i've got there is a maxillin uh, dark magic which is i believe a synthetic uh, as well synthetic uh, um, sealer and uh, it uh, is designed for older paint so i've put in a little bit uh, down there on one side we just going to polish that off so that's the the carnauba and then as i said you wouldn't normally do this you'd normally do it in panels but uh, i'm just going to um, just going to show you and there on this side I've got the the black ma the black magic or dark magic okay so we're going to work on both of them and you'll see that the result actually is very very similar uh, but the good thing about the the canuba wax it has this lovely smell and canuba waxes often have this lovely smell they're luxury uh, luxury components um, and it gives you a great sign shine as you can see um, and the the other one, which is the dark match, also gives you a great sign shine. But as I said, I'm going for longevity um, rather than a rather than looks. But look at that; they're they're both going to be great. And what you want to do is you want to polish them off until all the traces of the wax are removed. But as I said, I'm just going through this quickly. And of course, uh, if I was doing this uh, in winter, or sorry, in summer, then I would be taking a lot more time. But here, I'm going to cut to the chase to get the job done, get my protection in. Now, you'll also notice that some parts of the car can take more of a battering. And places that I like to wax uh, a little bit more is just the fronts and the front of the bonnet, the the uh, front spoiler and the side of the wings, because they take a lot of uh, punishment um, when, when you're driving, much more than the sides of the cars. So... Is it wouldn't be surprising if uh, the next, uh, let's say, the third or fourth wash from here, I might say, you know what, I'm going to give that bonnet a little bit more protection. It does make more sense that some aspects of the car will re require more protection. Now, the painting of this car isn't superb, but I do want it to look superb. And the way I can do it is by um, making an optical illusion, get the brain to fill in the spaces. So when your car is nice and clean, uh, people will look at it and even a uh, even a small like blemish or the scratch or anything will disappear as the brain fills in the whole picture. Um, and uh, so that, that's a, that's got to do with uh, the brain's uh, way of uh, accessing imagery. So if you've got a small scratch, it will make it disappear if the rest of the car is absolutely perfect. So let's go back up to the side of this car and let's have a look at where that scratch is. Okay, so over here i've applied a bit of wax and i'm trying to to show you give you a realistic impression of where the scratch is okay so i'm just walking around and yeah and i'm just trying to find it myself so um i do apologize for the fact but i'm trying to find it myself and i can't find it. i'm using my nail here to try and and locate it and i think i think it's around there somewhere but um as i said if you go back to the original video uh, at the start, you will see where the scratch was, and now you'll notice it's just not there. Okay, and as I said, I'm quite happy the the background there maybe has made a difference, but you clearly saw the same background, the same place. You could clearly see the scratch before. Um, other places to to also do is remember to go round and all round the entire car and look and see if you've left any bits of wax behind, and you will do. But it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, you just have to go back and and get it later on it's no big deal um so that's where we're at just now and a uh, just to, to to remind you that uh, you don't need to do everything all in the one go so here i'm not doing the wheels but these wheels were off the car um i think in summer and they were coated with a teflon coating which is the equivalent like a ceramic sealant so it's basically a nanoparticle sealant and it just does such a good job at keeping away the, the dirt off the wheels. So, yes, they've been blasted with the catcher, but they don't really pick up a lot of dust. They're actually quite resistant to dust. And again, in summer, I might take the wheels off and just give them a good clean. They might even get a, a little bit of uh, repainting because I have actually trashed them quite significantly uh, since then. It's the nature of, uh, of me curbing. Um, 
so yeah so get the uh, ptfe which is the ceiling can also be used on the paintwork of the of the cars as well now you will get all different types of fancy waxes and and a uh, sealants and and everything what it comes down to is really putting it on the car uh, and i look at uh, ease of application as being one of the main components so hopefully i, I hope you've enjoyed this and a uh, realize that you don't have to do everything in one shot take your time break it into small bits thank you so much for visiting and a uh, do hit the subscribe button if you're still here take care and all the best mm -hmm.